Well, and I, you know, I, I don't know that there's any grand conspiracy. There's not a, you know, I, I'm not right. saying anything like that. I actually, I, person- <laughs> I have no problem with that. <laughs> well, I, I think it's a control I, issue. I personally believe it's just the natural, um, the natural way governments go is that someone else gets in the power and they go, well, I guess I better do something. So, I'll, you know, and the only way to do something is to take more power and, and more control. And they constantly um, will just keep expanding it and, and doing a little bit of mission creep. Yeah. And so it'll just constantly keep expanding outwards. And it's just the natural progression of things. Are we uh, we losing some? What are, what's happening here? I'm not really sure. We're getting um, uh, the headphones are getting. Um, Is that it? Um, okay. I don't know if it's in the headphones are coming out over the air. I hope okay. it's not coming out over the air. So, so you really you, you don't think that there is any sort of planned deviant thing going on? You're just saying that all governments, I guess. So historically, if we look back at the Roman government or look back at different ones, it's always a matter of the government becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're just saying, okay, forget the conspiracy. But overall, government getting bigger has not been healthy historically, and we don't see it as healthy now. Let's do something to diminish that. Absolutely. It just, okay. It's their natural progression of you know the system or whatever is to just go keep taking more and more and more control and uh, to not cede control. Governments don't have a, a, a long history of going, you know what, we're going to go ahead and give you... Uh, more of your rights, right? Without there being some kind yeah. of yeah. S- yeah. significant thing, it's always we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and take that right. It's not that important to you. We'll just go ahead and take it. You know, if you're listening today and uh, you think your rights are being kind of stomped on, and you want to get in on this, you can call us at seven four two fifty five fifty five. This is live with Lou, and we're talking with Benjamin Bartholomew. Benjamin, uh, your card says we watch the watchers and our intent to set brush fires of liberty in the minds of others. So some of these incidents that you've created, you call it theatrics, uh, have certainly started the, the community talking, which is kind of what you're after, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we would have been fine to just go hold our sign and not have any right. you know, interaction with the police. That's something we're not looking for. Right. But we're prepared for it uh, you know, because we know people have run into problems, and so it's very important to us that we're prepared. But... Yeah, um, and in the card, you know, it's a l- we throw in a little Latin, we throw in a little uh, uh, Sam Adams there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, it's the idea is to get people motivated. I mean, a lot of people come, I mean, I used to do this, where I would just complain and talk about, oh, man, you know, I wish it government's, yeah. yeah, government's bad, and I wish government would shrink, and I, I wish government would do this, or I wish gov- government would do that. But people just complain and complain to their friends and their neighbors and wish that someone would do something. Right. And the fact is... We should do something. Right. Everyone should do something. And it doesn't take a lot. We're not going out. We're not even doing civil disobedience. We're not going and, you know, uh, you know clogging up a um, you know, city council or something. <laughs> yeah. He must have hit a note with somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but th- so we're not even doing that. We're just right for now. We've just been going out and holding signs and trying to get people to think about things. Right. And that's so far what we've done. So what's you, you wear masks? You, you, what's what's up with the mask? I mean, what what's the the hook with the mask? So we go out. Uh, usually, there's just me and my brother, but we've had other people join us. Um, and since there's just a couple of us and not you know a whole big crowd of people, right? Um, and we have a sign. We want people to look at the sign and read it, not just oh, there's a sign and ignore it. And a great way to bring attention is to have a costume. I mean, if you look, oh, cool. if you look at uh, you know Mr. Pickles or the, when the the Liberty oh, the taxes, Liberty tax yeah, people. they wear a, a little bit of a costume. It it brings more attention to it. Yeah. So we we wear these masks. There. Hold on okay. just a second. We're gonna. Go. Craig, you on the area with us? Is this Lou and Benjamin? This, this is Lou. Yeah, this is Lou Benninger and Benjamin Bartholomew. Go ahead, Craig. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Craig Christensen. I'm the director of the Yuba Sutter Tea Party Patriots. Uh huh. Go ahead. And over the last year, I've got to know Benjamin, and I'll tell you what. He is a very intelligent, thoughtful young man. I mean, the f- I, I met him about a year ago. He came to one of our functions. He was carrying his firearm uh-huh. legally. Yes. And the police showed up. He uh-huh. was legally detained and searched and there was no cause to arrest him so that that was my first experience and he on occasion comes to our meetings he uh-huh. is not a member he refuses to be a member because he does not want to attract attention to any group or organization he feels strong about what he does uh-huh and um but he doesn't want to cause any problems for anyone i mean i yeah. respect him 
tremendously. And if, if you know, as far as the Tea Party goes, if you either believe in the Constitution and your rights, or you do not. Right. And so we. When he comes to our meetings, we've discussed this. We've, we had a discussion one evening strictly about him so that our members would understand who he is. <laughs> it's working, Benjamin. It's and, working. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm just telling you, I've got to know him, and he, yeah. he, he's a first class for a young man. He's doing things that others only wished they could do. And uh, I, I'm just telling you, i got yeah. nothing but respect for him. Well, in other words, he set a brush fire in the minds of your members. He yeah. has. Yeah, that's I, great, man. I, I can tell you that there are some of our members who have never really uh, um, been, uh, you know, subjected to, you know, an, an open firearm. Right. Uh, you know, and everyone, you know, wants to support our Constitution until the time comes when you're faced with it. And, you know, there was a little hesitancy, I would say. But when right. he comes to our functions now, the first thing he does is he walks up and he says, I'm here, is there a problem? And if there's a problem, I'll leave. I mean, that's exactly what he does. And I tell him when he shows up that there is not a problem. And uh, as long as he's within the, the framework of the Constitution and our laws, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, well, it's, I mean, it's interesting that he even has, even has to ask that question, isn't but, it? Because of where we're coming from as a community now, that we 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 don't even know what our rights really are. We say we do, but then when somebody exercises them, we think, ah, that looks wrong to me. That's correct. Isn't and that true? Um, the fact is that he he doesn't have to ask, but he does. And I'm, no, that's he's just the kind of person he is. I'm telling you, and yeah. I I respect him completely. I mean, uh, that's great. Well, so. Craig, Craig, thanks for calling in, and uh, we appreciate your uh, good housekeeping stamp of approval on Benjamin. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Craig, just real quick, this is Fish. Um, you know, I, I'm assuming that the bulk of the uh, the uh, the people in the Tea Party, or at least what I have seen, has been older folks. Although I know there's some younger people involved. Um, don't you think someone like Benjamin really opens just because of his age? Don't you think that really opens a whole new window, not just for the Tea Party, but for a lot of young people to start thinking differently, that they can actively make a change, that they can look at the, even the Tea Party movement and say, you know what, I can be part of that? Absolutely. Yeah, that's it, great. It's a little slow coming when it comes to the younger generation, I can tell you, but it is coming around. Good. Yeah. Um, and we're working on that in uh, various uh, forms. It's, it's a challenge that we are addressing and um, Benjamin is one of our younger uh, members. He's not a member. He refuses to be, but right. he shows up, and he yeah. participates. And when, when we need help, he's there to help. I'm yeah. just telling you, it, I, uh, it really irritates me when I see the bad press about him for it, when you don't even know who he is and, and the kind of kid that he is. Yeah. I call him a kid because I'm... <laughs> you know, I'm old enough to be his dad. But. All right. Well, the fact is, in a newspaper, when we read anybody's names yeah. in the paper, uh, people jump to conclusions uh, that aren't really very accurate. So, well, that, anyway, Benjamin, true. keep up the good work, buddy. Hey, Wait thanks, Craig. Hey, Craig, thanks for calling, and we appreciate it. Uh -huh. <laughs> How does that feel, Benjamin, to know somebody's, somebody, instead of all the bad press, that you actually are making a difference? Well, it, it's good to know, like, I, I, th I don't, I think I mentioned this before the show, but I was saying that, you know, people who know me and know my family, when they heard about this arrest thing, none of them, uh, I mean, I guess maybe none of them said anything, but it's all been supportive. It's all been, you know, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this happened. Yeah, and right. Good for you, you know, standing up for your rights and, and doing what what is right. Right. You know, because, you know, we're not, I mean, you can go and look at the comments on the Appeal Democrat. A lot of the things people are saying are just simply not true or people are jumping to conclusions and, and, that, and that's to be expected I mean well, you know Lou and I are both from the 60s and um, uh, it, you know we we were in a generation that supported protest in, in a lot of ways whether you agreed with what was going on or not wasn't as much the issue as we did have that right to, to protest um, uh, I, I think that all protests can can um, uh, be taken too far you know, I do think that there is a point at which it's unhealthy, you know. Um, uh, but generally speaking, if it's just free speech and it's just I'm showing up or like you're doing, I, I see I would absolutely approve of that even if I disagreed with your stance. 
Do you know what I mean? I would, I oh, would, I yeah, would I, think I, this I is what we need to do. And I think a, a real key element of that, for example, is when you take something that, that, like Lou, you mentioned, we look around, don't see anybody with a weapon, so we just assume right. that's the law. Yeah. And when you take and you not only protest something, but you enlighten the people as, you know what, this right that I have, Look what's happening because we've come to a place where nobody acknowledges we have this right anymore. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, like so, the guys going down the road with the gun in the gun rack that you could see in the back window right. of the pickup. Like I was thinking about that a while back that my dad and I, were, who were hunters, uh, we used to pack guns all the time in the back of the pickup right there and, and totally totally visible. And I was noticing how, how many years and maybe decades I'd never even seen a gun rack anymore, but these guys had a gun rack and a gun, and I thought, hey, that's awesome, man, because well, I wonder how many people are freaking out over that. And right? I, should, I should mention a couple things. One of the things in the open carry community uh, that said a lot is rights unexercised are rights lost. So what you were saying earlier about how you, we just assume that we don't have that ability to do something because we look around and it's not there. And the other thing is, Honestly, the main reason I do open carry isn't because I'm afraid. I mean, crime is fairly low. I'm not yeah. afraid that I'm going to be attacked or, or anything, but it's to make a political message. It's to let people know because people actually, honestly, when they see me with a gun, the first thing they think of, or at least when I hear them, like a little kid will say, hey, Dad, why? look at the guy with the gun. Their response to that person or, or whatever, to whoever they're talking with is, oh, well, he must be law enforcement. Right. When we're, uh, you, you can open carry in Walmart, and we've had Walmart employees go, are you... To me and my brother, are you, are you guys deputies? And we have to go, no, we're just people. Yeah, I think, and, and unfortunately, everything that has to do with weapons in the media is negative. Yeah. Person, weapon, problem. And, and that's the sequence that we now have received instead of, instead of okay, if grandma is carrying a three fifty seven and she's in the bank and a bank robber comes in and draws down on grandma and grandma takes him out, Right, it changes the whole picture. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? In other words, ah, you know what? Don't 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 think about robbing the bank because the old ladies are carrying weapons in there. And I I remember the uh, and it was another YouTube that went viral. It was the one about the guy that it was a middle of a bank robbery, and he was carrying, and the guy had a shotgun, and it was a gal using an ATM, and he very quickly realized that guy is is going to shoot that girl. You know, because she wasn't aware of his presence because he'd come in somehow anyway. So he took him out. And the consequences of him saving that gal's life and probably others in the bank was ridiculous. And so they actually had the sheriff and other people came on that video. You can watch it on YouTube. Uh, came on that video and talked about he had a right to carry. He right. had a right to use it. There was somebody's life was at stake. And uh, the amazing thing is one of the rounds that this guy fired went down the barrel of the shotgun. <laughs> Unbelievable. Buddy, he, so, so when they said, well, how do you know the guy was going to shoot back? Again, one of the rounds went down the barrel of the shotgun. What does that tell you? you know? Yeah. So. 